Welcome to another RD Works Learning Lab. Today we're going to take a look at a very little used part of RD Works. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is to draw a, a circle. And I'm going to make that circle 25 millimeters diameter. Our program is as simple as that. We're now going to set the parameters up for that program. And I'm going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to produce it as a, a cut. I can edit this on the machine. So I can make the cut say 20% 20 20 power and 20% power. 20% power is about 40 watts. I'm going to have a speed of around about, let's start off with about 10. We don't want any of this stuff down here. So we're happy with that. We now save that to a file. So we now come back in and we'll reassign this. Instead of cut, we will change this to dot. Now take a look at the parameters and see how they change. Okay, so we've still got so we've still got our power, and I'm going to set that power down to 15% and 15%. Now the dot time is basically the amount of time that the beam stays on. So the beam will fire a shot, a pulse, but it will be whatever time I specify here. Now I think the first thing that I'm going to specify is something like about 0.02, 20 milliseconds, a 20 millisecond pulse. And the dot interval, it says here it's mn, I think it probably should be mm millimeters because the dot interval I'm going to use is 0.2 of a millimeter. And the dot length, well, I'm going to leave it at zero. I just want a squirt of power. Now if I put the speed in at 120, it won't make any difference at all, I don't think, because the dotting is controlled by the time that the pulse is on and the distance that it moves. So we save this and we'll go out to the machine. What we've got in front of us is some tri-wall corrugated cardboard. Now corrugated cardboard, I've found, is a particularly difficult material to cut. One of the problems with cutting corrugated cardboard is the air gaps and the voids inside. Anybody that cuts plywood and finds themselves cutting across a void inside the plywood will find that the cut becomes seriously disturbed and might not even make it through to the other side. The main reason for that is that smoke is a wonderful absorber of infrared energy and so consequently it bumps into the smoke and then loses all its energy and can't actually make its way through to the other side. With this tri-wall cardboard we've got two air voids. We've got a punch through the first air void and then we've got a punch through the second air void. Now it's only paper and you think to yourself easy peasy, no problem at all. Well, let's just do a few trials and see what I mean because I've always found this a very difficult material to work with. Now first of all I'm using almost the lowest power that I can to cut this with. Now that's about 15%. Now on my machine 15% is about 25 watts. If I go much lower than that I bump into my um, high frequency impact engraving range. We will go and experiment with that range shortly, but first of all I'm trying to experiment with the lowest possible power that I can. Now although I've got paper debris around the machine, I've purposely made sure that I haven't got any debris underneath where I'm cutting. And we're cutting this at 114 millimetres a second and around about 25 watts. Didn't make it through. Okay, let's try 12 millimeters a second. I think we have a fire underneath. Well, it has cut out and it's cut it out quite cleanly. Perhaps we go just a little bit faster. This is 17 millimeters a second. Not 
quite it's actually quite a clean cut that's surprising okay this is 15 millimeters a second and that's more or less a perfect cut okay so now we're impatient we're going to whack the power up to 65% which in this case is about 70 watts and uh, we're going to run it at 300 millimeters a second see if we can get the job done quickly fingers crossed well we've got our corner burns that we always seem to get running a little bit fast but there's some hope there that we might be able to achieve some. so we've got 40 millimeters a second now wow okay I'm pretty pleased with that we haven't got too much excess power I can't see on my base plate any square that would represent the excess power going through. Now what you've seen me do there is the correct way to approach this problem. Insufficient, too much speed or insufficient power. And then gradually either reduce the speed or increase the power. Well I can't increase the power so I've had to gradually decrease the speed to get the cut to go through. In the past I've done something maybe like this. Let's have a look what happens when we run it at 10. <laughs> there's the answer that's how you start fires in your machine well up to now here has been the ideal application for me of using corrugated cardboard um, if I wanted to do lots of detailed pieces that I had to cut out for example a jigsaw puzzle where you don't want the pieces to fall out you want them all to stay in one place then corrugated cardboard is an ideal material to use because you choose the cutting speed for the uh, acrylic I've got 65% power on here which is quite high but that probably means I can run at about 18 millimeters a second and we shall see what happens basically here's what happens that material is cut out nicely and the extra energy has been absorbed into the back there but it hasn't come through so it forms a really nice solid material instead of the honeycomb matrix that you may well have in the bottom of your machine well having said that this is a difficult material to cut and now proved otherwise several people have asked me how we can use dotting mode and why you would use dot mode instead of cut mode well maybe this isn't the best material to try it on but you can certainly see comparatively how well it works on corrugated cardboard I've got the speed set to about 125 millimeters a second I'm fairly confident the 125 millimeters a second means nothing at all because I think the speed of the cut will be controlled by the dotting function itself So we've got very short pulses of energy which we can control. I've got the power set to 15% and I've got the speed set to 125 millimeters a second. Now 12% on this machine takes me down into my high impact engraving region where the ionization, the beam is not properly formed and it's actually uh, a high frequency beam so let's just see what happens the top 
and that's the bottom with a little bit of burning on. So I think we've got to go and fiddle with the um, the pulse speed, <coughs> the pulse time, and see what else we can achieve. You'll see the dot interval is 0.2 millimeters. We've changed the dotting interval to 0.3, so we should have basically a 50% speed increase. We've still got a burn towards the end of the cut there. Okay, well we're now going to run this with a different set of parameters. We've even halved. We've taken the uh, we've taken the time down from 0.05 seconds down to 0.02 seconds, so 20 milliseconds for a pulse. Well, it's just about made it through. It's done a superb job. No burn on the top. No burn on the bottom. No burn on the element that came out. So this little demonstration was really just to show you that, first of all, the run speed makes no difference at all. Your power obviously will have an effect but by far and away the biggest effect is going to be the pulse time and these this other parameter here which is the dot spacing but as you can see with a 0.3 dot spacing you can't see that it's perforated in any way at all so I'll leave you to play now that you know how it works so here we've got some PETG, which basically is a copolyester. This is normally a difficult material to cut. It does produce fumes, but they're not particularly dangerous fumes. Um, so what we're gonna do is see whether or not we can get dotting mode to work with this particular material. One of the problems with it, it tends to burn the edges and produce brown edges when you cut it normally. Looks like it's nearly through. When we hold it up to the light I can actually see the perforations. It's not coming out because of the perforations. So what we need to do is change it. I mean it hasn't burnt it. I mean that is a superb finish. So we've got lots of possibilities here. Um, what I'm going to have to do is change the dotting from 0.3. I'm going to go and reduce it now to about 0.2 and see whether or not we can get it to fall out. reduce the step length to 0.1 of a millimeter. We have increased the burn time to 30 milliseconds. And the power has gone up to about 42 watts. Well, it's just hanging in there by a couple of little threads. There we go, look, I just touched it and it's fallen out. Well, it's quite a clean cut. Still not brilliant. Now we're going to try the same settings on a slightly different material, which again, you can cut, but it's quite a difficult material to cut because it tends to burn the edges and produce horrible melts. Um, and this is polycarbonate. Again, produces horrible smelling fumes, but there's nothing particularly dangerous in them. So I'd certainly advise you to keep your lid down normally and get the fumes extracted. And all it's done is made a horrible mess on the surface. It 
has just about made it through in one or two places so this is definitely not going to cut with that process this is 13 percent five millimeters a second Oh, I don't like the look of those brown things under there. I think you can see why you wouldn't really want to cut polycarbonate. So polycarbonate won't cut by the dotting process. And I would be reluctant to cut this again because some of the fumes that I saw coming out underneath there looked like they contained some nasty chemicals. Um, yellow fumes on here would tend to indicate we might have some sulfur in it. So that's my one and only try at polycarbonate. Maybe you'll come across a material where nothing else works and possibly dot mode might be able to help you out. So um, at least you've seen how it works and what you can do with it. So good luck to you. Thanks for watching.